Hello everyone and welcome to Alam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can attach a tap gesture to your custom view control created in Swift UI. Right now you can see that we only have content view and nothing more. We do have a views folder that I added. I'm going to go ahead and add a new view inside the views folder. And I'm more like working on a card application. So I'm just going to call this card view or simply card. And now I can actually go ahead and create my card application or my card view actually. The first thing I'm going to do is obviously import Swift UI. And I'm creating a custom view, which will be called card, which will be using the view protocol. The only requirement of the view protocol is that I implement the body property. And then now over here, I can actually return what the card will actually look like. And this is completely up to me, how I create the card. I'm gonna go ahead and take a vertical stack and going to use a text view. And in the text view, I can say card or whatever you want to do in the text view. If you try to look at the preview for this particular card control that we're building, you're not really going to find anything. And the reason is that, well, we haven't really implemented the preview provider. So let's go ahead and do that. Struck preview provider is not really mandatory thing. It's only needed if you are, uh, if you want to look at the preview. So the first thing is that it's, I, I will only use this if I'm actually in the debug mode. So if debug, and then finally end if. I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure. I would call this card preview or previews, which will be a preview provider. In order to conform to the preview provider, I must implement the static var previews property, which will return some sort of a view. That view will be just the card view itself, which is this one. So now hopefully if I click on the resume button, I should see a very basic card view, which simply contains a text and that's pretty much it. Obviously I need a little bit more information than just text. So let's go ahead and add that. The text is fine, but I want to control the height, the width and everything of the card view. So this means that I can actually go ahead and provide frame, which will have a minimum width of zero and maximum width of infinity. And the same thing I'm gonna do is the minimum height, which will be zero and maximum height, which will be infinity. Let's go ahead and zoom it out a little bit. Okay, so this is fine, but I also want to change the background color. So I can actually go ahead and pass in the background and I can say color dot purple. Let's see if it changes the color, great. I also want it to be the rounded corner, so corner radius, and I can pass in 30 or any other number. And now you can see it actually looks nice like a card. For the text, I want to go ahead and change the font size to be title and also the color of the font to be white. So the font and the, the color is applied on the text, but all of this is applied on the vertical stack that we have. So this is what it looks like. Now I can actually go back and use my card control. So I'm gonna go back over here into my content view. And instead of the text, I'm simply going to use the card control, which is card. Great. And now it appears over here, that's great. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I can actually click on the card or I can tap on the card. So how can we do that? Well, there is a gesture function that you can use where you can actually pass in the gesture or type of the gesture. There is a rotation gesture, drag gesture, magnify, magnification gesture and tap gesture just for tapping. How many times do I need to tap? Well, just one is fine. And now we will implement, so you can see that we are providing some implementation for the tap gesture, which in this case will be on ended, which means when the tap gesture has ended, what should I do? 
So whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it over here. So when we tap this, what do we want to do? Well, we want to change the color of this background from purple to orange. For this, we will have to create a state, private var, and I can call this tapped, which will be a Boolean value, which will initially be false. Now, after creating the property, I can actually go over here and when you actually tap, I can say tapped dot toggle, which is going to toggle the property tap from true to false and false to true. This is great, but the cart won't really have any effect on it because we're not really using this property inside the cart. So maybe we need to pass in the property. So how do we pass in the property? Well, we can simply say tapped and pass in self dot tapped. Now card doesn't really allow you to pass any property, so we need to update the card. So let tapped boolean and initially we can assign it false when you get this property now we can actually use this property somewhere over here in the background and we can say self dot tapped if it is tapped then go ahead and color it orange if it's not tapped then color it purple okay let's go ahead and build that all right, we have some issue, some error somewhere. Uh, argument to pass takes no arguments. I thought we already did that. Okay, so what we can do is we can change this to var. You can actually change it to uh, let, but if you change it to let, then you'll have to remove that. So it's up to you. Um, I mean, I can say something like over here like this, remove that. And now you need to actually pass in the value. Uh, apart from that, we also need to pass in something over here. So tapped is false. So you can actually check over here if it works or not. We're simply passing false. So if it's tapped, it's gonna be orange or else it's gonna be purple. So let's go ahead and pass in true and see if that changes color. So it worked working fine, great. Now we can go back to our content view and that should be good. We have already set this up. So we're passing on the tap gesture. I can go ahead and uh, run this application again. And now you can see that if I tap, it's actually changing the color and toggling it between orange and purple. So this is, this is how you attach a gesture. And in this case, a tap gesture to your control. Now there are some other gestures like drag gest gesture and other gestures, which I'll cover maybe later on. So this is, this is it, this is it. there you have it. Pretty easy to do, pretty easy to attach gesture. Um, now, one of the reason that I didn't really make this a bindable property with the binding attribute, I didn't really do that. The reason I didn't really do that is that I'm not really toggling or changing the state or changing this particular property inside my card. I'm simply displaying it and that's it, or utilizing it kind of like a read-only property. If I was supposed to click a button somehow and change this and I wanted that effect or that change to be reflected in my content view, then yes, I would have made it as a binding property. But I really, really didn't want it to do that. Everything is actually in content view and the state is maintained in the content view. So there you have it. This is how you create and attach a gesture to your existing control. Hey, if you want to support my channel and my videos and my work, then the best way would be to simply go on Udemy and buy my courses. I have a new course that is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can see it's around 4.5 hour code, but I'm still working on it. Uh, there are a couple of sections that I'm still working on this. Swift UI on all devices and gestures also. I need to put that one out there also. So there are a couple of sections that I'm still working on. But you can definitely get it started 4.5 hours is a pretty big course and by the time you reach at the end uh, you'll have more stuff in it or more sections uh, the link to the course and a lot of other courses that i have is right there in the description of the youtube video so there will be links i would be really really grateful if you use those links to go to udemy and buy the course because if you use those links I get to keep 
much higher revenue and you're gonna get the best price, I promise you that. You're gonna get $9.99, which is basically $10, and you cannot go any lower than that. And if you use those links, then I get to keep $9. So that is, thank you so much if you use those links. By the way, at the end of the links uh, in the YouTube description, there will be a link also to subscribe to my mailing list right at the bottom somewhere. If you click on that subscribe it, just put your email and you subscribe it, then you can get books and articles and other free stuff and coupons for my new courses and previews and a lot of other things you can get for completely for free. All right, now obviously in the mailing list, I will send out some coupons like discounted coupons also. So some things will be free, some things won't be free, but books and stuff, articles that I will be writing, I will give it obviously for free. So thank you very much for supporting. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.